when I'm beating up on Elbit and L3, understand I'm not actually beating up on the tubes because they make amazing tubes. What I'm beating up on is guys that probably can't sprint 50 yards telling me what I should run on my head. I'm about to show you guys two different night vision images. One is an Elbit PVS-14 that has around 2,900 FOM. The other one is an image through my Photonis PD Pro binocular night vision device, which has 2,100 FOM. And I want you guys to guess which one's which. You ready? Boom, boom. Which one's a Photonis? Let's talk about it. Around 2021, Ethan and I started talking a lot about night vision on our company page, TA Targets. And the reason why is we saw a whole lot of misinformation out there and just bad information in general about different night vision devices. And so I wanted to talk a little bit today about those different nuances and why photonis tubes should be considered. Now, one thing I wanna say at the beginning here is I'm not advocating that photonis is the perfect tube for every single situation and every single scenario. What I am saying is there's a whole lot of bad information out there on the interwebs, especially in forums and Facebook groups regarding photonis intensifier tubes. Things thrown around like Gen 2 tubes or throwing around like photonis tubes suck that in low light situations, you can't even use for times. There's a whole lot of bad intel out there. And I think if you've been on my channel for any amount of time, you know one thing, my opinion can't be bought or sold. So because of this, I'm gonna speak freely on everything. It doesn't matter what I'm talking about. I care more about my name and my honor than I do caring about any kind of opinion about me or any company's opinion about me or whatever. Second, the Photonis tubes that I'm referencing, I paid for, I bought all this stuff. None of this was given to me. Now I've had probably a hundred different Photonis tubes through my hands, along with L3 tubes and Elbit tubes and Harris tubes and all kinds of fun stuff, weird Russian and Chinese tubes, you name it. I've had my hands on virtually every type of tube you could ever have. Maybe not back in history, but current modern tubes that are available on the market, I've touched them, I've shot guns with them, I've navigated driven vehicles, gone in bright moonlight situations, I've gone in complete overcast canopy cover, I've been out in pouring freaking down rain in total cloud cover at 3 a.m. in the middle of a creek bed. So like I've done this stuff with night vision for the past couple years. So needless to say, I'm equipped enough to talk about this and give you actual facts about this current topic, photonis tubes and whether they suck or not. So if I had to rate my prioritization of intensifier tubes for almost all situations, so a very well-rounded unit, and I had to pick between photonis, Elbit and L3, my prioritization level would be Photonis, Elbit, L3. L3 is at the bottom of the list for me for many different reasons, and I think that's a video in and of itself, but Photonis is at the top. So why would I say that? Why would I go against the grain and say, you should consider Photonis as a top priority, and if you want higher gain levels, consider Elbit. Why would I do that? Well, there's a couple different reasons. For one, I work and shoot in areas that blend from wooded areas to fields to urban. I will find myself in all three of those situations. And it is not even a freaking debate. When it comes to urban situations, Photonis is king. I will take Photonis over everything if there's highlight scenarios, if I'm coming from a dark building and entering an alleyway that has street lights, if I'm driving and I have headlights from oncoming traffic, Photonis is king. The clarity is second to none. It has amazing highlight performance. You don't diminish that figure of merit in the highlight scenarios like you will with L3 or Elbit. You will see a stark difference if you look through two units, a Photonis 4G and say an Elbit SLH in highlight performance or an L3 tube, you're just gonna see a difference. So that's one of my factors. I also prefer to have bang for my buck. So I want to invest my money in something that isn't necessarily gonna cost me an arm and a leg and I want it fast. So when I bought my PD Pros here, these have 4G tubes, they're white phosphor. I bought this thing and Photonis is local to me. They're in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So I drove to their location and picked them up, but they would ship them you know, in a couple days anyway. So I was able to get these in just a couple days. Because of that, the availability often on our website of Photonis tubes is faster than getting an L3 unit. So when I'm looking at working with customers and trying to get somebody into something fast, Photonis often has a little bit lower barrier of, en barrier of entry into the night vision world. They're also available usually much quicker than the Elbit or L3 variants. But let's talk about where this mis 
conception and this bad information comes from? Well, there's a couple things here. We've got a couple different groups of people that exist in the night vision world. We've got gear nerds who are like the Redditors of the night vision world. They essentially like to breathe heavily on their keyboards and type things that make no sense. So I would say the vast majority of people posting on forums or Facebook groups fall into the mouth breather category. They have no freaking clue what they're talking about. And ultimately, I'm not trying to make fun of those people, but those people didn't have the budget to go spend $600,000 on night vision units like we have, like we have spent so much money on night vision units to play, look through, sell, retail, build, and equip you guys. So I have eyeballs that have seen so many different tubes. And because of that, I can break a lot of these myths. So when I have a mouth breather saying, holy cow, you're wrong. It's like, well, how am I wrong when I've looked through a hundred different photonis units? And frankly, I prefer them. Like, who are you to tell me what I prefer? So you've got those people who have no freaking clue what they're talking about. Then you've got the confirmation bias crowd. So the confirmation bias crowd are the ones that, you know, they saved their money, they were able to buy one unit. So maybe they got a DTNVS, maybe they got BNVDs, maybe they got 31s, whatever. They got something, but they, they saved their pennies and they bought something. And usually those people land on Elbit or L3. Those people tend to, let's say less Elbit, but more L3 people tend to have a lot of confirmation bias because when you drop $12,500 on a unit and then your buddy shows up with, I don't know, a PVS-14 with an echo tube in it and he bodies you in your local airsoft match, you gotta say something like, oh man, well my L3 tubes, I gotta justify what I purchased because I spent so much money, but I just got bodied by this obese kid with Photonis echo tubes. Ultimately, a lot of people with the L3 tubes have confirmation bias. That just is what it is. L3 is seen as this sexy tube that is the do all, but I've got a question for you guys. How many of you guys have a no gain unit, okay? You have no gain control. You're rocking a freaking high spec L3 unit and you've gone out and burned your retinas out because you're an idiot and you spent too much money on a unit without thinking of the actual application of said unit. It's a whole lot of people that buy L3 that do that, okay? Not everybody. L3 has its place. They make really high quality tubes that have high performance in certain situations, but in certain situations they fall apart and they're not the best tube for the job. And in those situations, that's where I lean into the 4G tubes, but I digress. So you've got the mouth breathing Redditors, you've got the confirmation bias people, and then you've got the open-minded people who are trying to do research and make a good decision for themselves. So that crowd, I would say, is a decent percent of people and it's expanding ever more. So in the past, when you would talk about Photonis on these forums, you would find that people would just make fun of you. They would bash you, call you poor Tonis or whatever they would say. They would literally say, well, if you have Photonis, you're poor. There's a broader theme that's going on here that I'll talk about at the end of the video, but people would essentially shame people for considering Photonis. But now as more and more companies have finally said, like hey, we shouldn't have people waiting six months for L3, and we don't necessarily need them to run Elbit SLH tubes or mil spec tubes or commercial tubes, whatever it is. We could probably push them over here and say, here's another option. Maybe not push is the word, but give another option because ultimately options are a great thing. We wanna balance all of this out. So on those different groups of people, we've got a whole lot of information getting thrown back and forth and a lot of opinions. Most people in every single one of those categories has not had their hands on more than one unit. Or if they've looked through a Photonis tube, they've looked through an echo tube that their buddy bought with no spec sheet, has no history of it, and it's just an extremely inexpensive echo. It does not compare to a Photonis 4G tube. Because of that, we've got skewed information out there. And our job over at Arcane and with TA Targets was to break a lot of that down. And I can tell you this, as soon as we started talking about Photonis, we had three or four night vision manufacturers reaching out to us and saying, stop it, stop talking about it. Why would they do that? It's because L3 has clout. The Elbit commercial mil spec tubes have clout. When you come in with Photonis, a foreign tube that is performing almost identically to these other units, but often you can get them at a lower price, it dismantles the whole narrative. If you've built your entire business speaking L3 is the best, but all of a sudden dudes are coming in with Photonis 4G units that are less money, more available, and frankly, in many situations, outperform the L3, you kind of debase yourself, you know what I mean? You kind of break down your own customer base and also you're doing a disservice. And when it comes out that all those years that you said L3 is the best and you shouldn't buy Portanis, 
The problem is, as soon as people start to see that Photonis has an amazing set of tubes, you've proven that you lied for all that time and you had ill intentions against your customer. So let's talk about the differences here in the different tubes. So the three tubes that we typically build our units with are the Photonis Echo, I'll say four tubes. We've got Photonis Echo, we've got Photonis 4G, we've got Elbit. Elbit sometimes will have XLSH, although that's getting very rare. Sometimes we'll have SLH, but we also have other spec Elbits that we'll build into BNVDs or PBS 14s, things like that. And then we have availability of L3. L3 is the least style or brand of tube that we offer to our customers. I mean, I'll sell anybody an L3 tube if they really want it. If they wanna have their unit built up, we'll do it. However, the Elbit and Photonis in almost every situation are gonna be the better option for people unless you just truly want L3. And a good example is customers that are prior military or spend a lot of time with 31s or the GPMV G18s. We often have friends and customers that specifically want the tubes that they ran while they were deployed. And I get that, that's 100% good. You spent time fighting with them. You know, I think there's a, a valuable argument to that. But what really is the difference between all these? Well, Photonis gets called Gen 2 all the time and the other ones get called Gen 3. The first thing I wanna tell you guys is justifying your tube or saying a tube is better or worse based on generation is retarded. You shouldn't do it. Stop doing that. It's stupid. You're being dumb. You're being an idiot. Stop calling things Gen 3 good because I can show you a Harris tube that's a Gen 3 that's absolute dog and you would hate it. And then I can show you a echo tube that would cost you freaking $2,000 in the gray market or black market that your buddy sold off some truck that he found. And it's going to outperform that Gen 3 tube. So stop it. Stop saying that crap because it's absolutely annoying. Generation is a totally outdated concept. It doesn't matter. It has no merit on the performance of a tube because you can have a crappy Gen 3, you can have a crappy Photonis, you can have a ballin' Gen 3, you can have a ballin' Photonis. The reason Photonis can't be called Gen 3 is because the way that the government rates a Gen 3 is with a photocathode with a construction that is gallium arsenide, okay? So we've got a component of an intensifier tube that is made a certain way. The intensifier tube for Photonis is made a different way. It's not the same. It's not the same construction. So you can't define it as Gen 3. Because of that, people want to say Gen 2 or Gen 2 Plus or all this other crap that doesn't even matter. So stop it. Stop calling it generation because it doesn't freaking matter. What we look at when we're looking at the tubes is the individual specs. And when you look at Photonis, when, whether it comes to center resolution, halo, um, even gain, I'm gonna to get to that, but gain, we look at EBI, SNR. All of those specs that matter, the Photonis tubes are gonna be right up there with all the other ones, okay? The only caveat is Photonis often has less gain than Elbit or L3, not always. It depends on the specs of the specific tube that you are looking at. It is not always the case. However, Photonis does often have lower gain than the other two options. So that's where people come in and say, oh, well they have less gain, so when you're in canopy you can't see. Most of you that have L3 tubes that say, I bought L3 tubes because the gain is hot, you're not even training. Like, let's be real, you've got your nods, you have them in your safe, you don't know how to turn them on or use them, you guys don't drive with them, you're not running around with them, you're not shooting with them, you like to flex in the freaking Wendy's parking lot with your nods, which is weird, stop it. You don't have a clue what you're talking about. There are some of you that do have a clue what you're talking about and I applaud you because you actually train with your unit, but there's many of you that should just shut up and sit down and let the real boys talk here. So looking at the fact that generation doesn't matter, looking at the fact even that FOM isn't the best measurement because the line pair per millimeter, the center resolution is up to the interpretation of whoever's measuring it. It's not the perfect measurement for the performance of a tube. What I'm trying to hammer home here, guys, is there is no one tube for everybody. There's no one tube that's perfect for every situation. There's definitely a time where L3 will shine. There's a time when Elbit will shine. There's a time when Photonis will shine. For me personally, Photonis is the top of my list because it offers me a well-rounded unit that has extremely fast auto gating, very high clarity, very great highlight performance, and because it's not blisteringly high gain, I don't get temp burns with my PD Pros. I don't have to worry about staring into oncoming traffic as I'm driving my Jeep down not public roads on closed courses. I don't have to worry about that kind of stuff because this unit is so robust. And that's the last thing I wanna end with is when I'm running Elbit tubes, whether they're XLSH, SLH, or whatever other flavor we've got, 
If I so much as look at my buddy that has a cigar lit when we're out on the range talking or shooting, I get a temp burn, it'll get a streak. Does it go away? Yes, it does. Same thing with L3. If you look at the wrong light for a split second, you will get a temporary burn like that across your tube. The Photonis just doesn't do that. I've not had that same scenario with the 4G tubes or the Echo tubes. That's not saying that it won't happen because you will get temp burns if you're looking into bright lights like a Goober, but they are more robust in general in my experience than the other two offerings. And we can dive deep into the why behind that. But what I wanted to basically say guys is you need to do your research and you need to find a company that doesn't push you to one brand, okay? I know it sounds like I'm pushing you to one brand. I'm just trying to debunk all of the hate that's out on the market for Photonis. But ultimately, if you land on believing that L3 is best for you, you should buy that. If you think Elbit's better for you, you should buy that. If you think that Photonis is better for you, you should buy that. But ultimately, the broader point here is, what's more important than the tube that you have in your unit is that you're actually using your unit. You're not just out posting weird pictures of yourself on the internet. You are actually hiking with it, riding a mountain bike, walking your dog, taking your trash out, driving your vehicle, driving your dirt bike, driving a four-wheeler. You are, I don't know, fishing, are you allowed to fish at night? I don't even know, but maybe you're fishing with your night vision. You're doing tasks, regular things that you would do in the daylight, you're doing them with your nods. If you're doing that, it does not matter if you have a lower spec or lower dollar amount tube, you're gonna be effective with that unit. If you are just collecting gear and you're shoving it in a safe and you don't use it, you don't have your helmet set up properly, you don't have it dialed in, you haven't run with it, you haven't spent time in different weather conditions with it, I don't care if you have GPMV G18s, you're gonna suck. And if you're gonna suck, you're a liability. It doesn't matter if you spent 10 grand, 15, 20, 30, $40,000 in your unit, gear does not equate to skill. So what I would encourage you guys to do, give a long, hard look at all the offerings, reach out to us over at Arcane. If you want help getting into a unit, Ethan would be glad to answer any questions that you have. I'm gonna put the email down below that you can get directly in touch with our team over at Arcane. If you don't go with us, that's great, fine, whatever. I don't care, I'm not trying to get you guys to buy from us. If you want to support what we're doing, that is an option, you can do that. If you liked the, uh, the blunt humor that I had in this video, I appreciate if you uh, like and subscribe. Um, if you are one of those guys who just absolutely cannot stand the fact that people run Fatanis, you can vent down below and we'll let my following beat you up. But I appreciate you guys, stay well, stay safe. We'll see you in the next one. So corporate just notified me that they felt that I was a little bit hard on the L3 and Elbit tubes. I love Elbit tubes, I really do. I love the Elbit tubes, they're really nice tubes. What I was venting about, what I truly hate, are weenies that get out on the internet that have never run their gear and they want to act like their opinion is gospel. So when I'm beating up on Elbit and L3, understand I'm not actually beating up on the tubes because they make amazing tubes. What I'm beating up on is guys that probably can't sprint 50 yards telling me what I should run on my head. Anyway, I'll work.